What's up, everybody? It's Broken Bones here, and welcome to Broken's Bedrock Tutorials. Today, we're going to be showing you how to make a mega lava farm. Most of the other designs you're going to find on YouTube are piston V-tapes. As you can see, that is not the design that I chose. However, my design does use a piston V-tape, but it's down below, and as you can see, it's pushing these redstone blocks around, which trigger these pistons, and then when they go above, as you can see, they have a piston that pushes these cauldrons in that direction. If we come right over here and turn the farm on, you're going to see that that light turns on, and then these cauldrons are going to start getting pushed in this area, just like this. As you can see, there's another one getting pushed just like so. And what this allows, it allows just for a few cauldrons to be moving, just the ones that have to be, while all the other ones sit still and collect lava. That allows all of your cauldrons to be as efficient as possible, while only a certain times, just like this, when they are all full, then they're going to all get pushed over at once, just like this right there. When cauldrons are moving, they cannot collect lava, so the longer that they sit still, the more efficient your farm is going to be. However, most of your designs are piston V-tapes, like I said, which makes all of the cauldrons move, which is really the most inefficient design. So now I've logged in my second account, and as you can see, he's using the farm. Every time a cauldron goes by, it spits out a bucket to him, and that is controlled by a comparator out the back. And so if the cauldron is not full, it will not spit out a bucket, so it will not overload your player and give him a bucket if it's not needed. And here's your storage for all your buckets up here, so you have plenty of storage. You are going to need more than just a barrel, however, this is your output for your storage. So if you open up that barrel, just like so, you can see that that's filled up with lava buckets. And so you can extend that out the bottom if you want to. And as you can see, this farm is going to push all of these around here, just like so. Taking the empty buckets, putting them in the back, and then letting them fill up as they go through the farm. This farm is also expandable, and you can expand it up to the simulation distance that you can load chunks in. So on simulation 4 distance, you could make this 9 chunks wide, and you'd have to stand right in the center chunk. But that being said, we also have a timing circuit out the back that is adjustable. Depending on how big you make this, you can ramp this up, make it fast, or you can keep it slow if your farm is small. When you expand your farm to a larger size, you're going to want to ramp it up because the cauldrons will have just as much time to go through the lava and fill up. However, if you're going to build your farm small, it's going to be more efficient to leave it slow so the cauldrons still have the time to fill up. As you can see, lava farms just really aren't that fast. They don't refill with lava, and my second account has been at this farm while I was over there checking out the expanded one. And as you can see, only about half of the cauldrons have filled back up. And that is exactly why I made a farm that was expandable. And other than that, this farm is pretty simple and easy to build. And if you're ready to get started with the tutorial, then go ahead and smash the like button for me and subscribe if you guys are new. And a material list will be down in the description. To start things off, you're going to want to chunk align your build and sub chunk align your build. And if you don't know how to do that, I've got a tutorial for you guys over the top right hand corner. If you plan on expanding this farm, then be sure to prepare all of those chunks as well. And you can prepare it all the way up to your full simulation distance, however far that is. And regardless of how big you make this, you're going to be starting on the right hand side right over here which is from the front hand side which is going to be this side so this is going to be your front and this is going to be the side that we start on we're going to be building over here so if you're facing the front of your build come to the back right hand corner over here go ahead and place in it two blocks just like this and two more just like that on top of those two blocks go ahead and place in yourself some pistons and break these blocks out on these two blocks go ahead and play, face two of them up just like this then come around back and come down here and place in it two observers just like that make sure that those arrows are pointing down and the red dot is on this side once you've got that in the back right hand corner go ahead and come to the front right hand corner and we're going to do the same thing we're going to go ahead and come up by two blocks just like this and then on the front of these two blocks we're going to have two pistons just like that and then on top of those two pistons we're going to take two observers go ahead and place those in there just like so take two blocks just like this and then two regular pistons come down here place those in facing down just like that once you have these two in place just like this, come to the bottom right here and break these two blocks out. Then on top of these two blocks, place in some redstone dust just like this, and then a block right there. At the end of this redstone, go ahead and place another block in right there, and place yourself in a repeater on four ticks. Once you have that in, go ahead and place a block there and a block there and a block out to this side, and you can break this one out. Go ahead and place in blocks all the way across, all the way over to here. And then go ahead and place a block right there as well. It should be in line with those pistons. Place a block up there just like this and break that one out. Go ahead and place a repeater in here also on four ticks just like that. Place another repeater over here on four ticks and one more. And then also one more so you have four in total on this side. Then come back over here. You're going to place in it three more on this side. So go one, two, and three. All of them on four ticks. So you have four, tick, uh, four repeaters over here just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some redstone dust. Go ahead and place it on top of these pistons just like that. 
that. Come in between these repeaters, go ahead and place redstone dust on top of all of these blocks as well. Once you have this in place, go ahead and grab some redstone blocks in your glass, and then you're going to place two redstone blocks on the faces of these pistons right there. Go ahead and grab your glass and go ahead and bring this all the way back here just like so, leaving a gap right there. Do the same thing right here, go ahead and bring these all the way back just like this, all the way there, and leave a gap right there in between those pistons. Go ahead and come on down below. Go ahead and place in two redstone blocks right there and right there. And do the same thing. Bring these glass blocks all the way back, leaving yourself a gap right there so that you can get pushed. Do the same thing on this side. Bring that all the way back, leaving a gap. Once you have this in place, go ahead and come to your two glass blocks that are right here. Not the two redstone blocks, but right here. Go ahead and place in two sticky pistons just like this. Take yourself an observer, place it in there with the red dot facing sideways just like that. And then take yourself a normal piston, place it in there facing forward just like that. And now you need to replicate this across all these blocks. Once you have this in place, it should look something like this. And then when you have all that done, go ahead and come one block away from your observer. Go ahead and place in a temporary block and then a piston on top of it just like that. Go ahead and come right around back over here, placing yourself an observer just like this with a block on its face. Go ahead and place a temporary block here and place one down here and break that one out. Grab yourself some redstone dust and place it in right there. Once you have that in place, then go ahead and grab a block from up here. Grab yourself a redstone block just like this. Then grab yourself a sticky piston, come down here, have that sticky piston facing down just like that, and then you can break this block out. Once you have that in place, then go ahead and come to this block right here. Go ahead and place in a temporary block and then one out to the side just like this. Take this block and extend it all the way across over to your last bit of redstone just like that. Break this block out, leave two blocks, break another block out, leave one block, and then break your last block out just like this. On top of this one here, go ahead and place in yourself a comparator just like that. Go ahead and place some redstone dust there and there just like so. And then go ahead and put that on four ticks. Once you have this done, then go ahead and grab yourself a comparator, place one in there, and then place another one right here. Grab yourself some redstone dust and place it in there just like that. Then grab yourself a temporary block, place that in there just like so, and then one up just like this with a sticky piston just like so. Grab yourself an observer, place that uh, facing down just like this so the red dot is facing into this block just like that. And then once you have that done, go ahead and grab yourself some redstone dust like so. Grab yourself a block, place it up there like this, and one out to the side. Grab yourself a slab, and then come down below just like this, and then go ahead and break these two out. Place some redstone dust on top of there, and then grab yourself a block, and put some more redstone dust on top of this one. Next, go ahead and grab yourself a block, and then place one down below it, and then above it just like so, and do this again right here just like that. And then you can go ahead and place one more in there like this. Break this one out, and then break that one out. Grab yourself two comparators, place one in here, and another one in there, just like this. Once you have this done, it should look something like this. And then once that is, go ahead and come over here to your redstone block. Go ahead and remove it, and then replace it. And you should see that your system now goes ahead and triggers, and you should see that your first piston pops up and triggers just like that. Once again, go ahead and remove this and then trigger it again. And you should see that here in a moment that your second piston comes up. As long as you know that's happening, then your system is working. To continue, you are going to need to cycle this through all the way through to make sure that all these pistons are now down. When you trigger your last piston, you should see that it raises up just like this. And you should see that it triggers this observer here and it'll go ahead and trigger one more time. And you should see that your redstone blocks are back in the original position and your whole system is back to square one. Once you know your system is working, then go ahead and come to the opposite side of the farm over here, and you're going to want to go to the furthest chunk that you want to expand it to. So for me, that's going to be way over there, but if you're building one chunk farm, then it would be right here on your chunk border. So next, you're going to come two blocks in from the edge, just like this. Go ahead and place in a temporary block there and go one, two, three, four, and five, just like that. Then on top of that fifth block, place in yourself a piston and then break out your five temporary blocks, just like that. And then once you have that in place, go ahead and extend that over 12 blocks just like so. And you should see that that leaves you a two block gap on this side just like so. And then once you have that in place, go ahead and take yourself some redstone dust and place it on top of all of those. So if you're building the full version, then your pistons would be way back here like this. Once you have your pistons in down there, then go ahead and come back to your station over here. And if you're building the one chunk version of this, then you do not need to do this. But if you're building two or more, then you will definitely need to do this. You need to come to this piston right here and place in the 13 blocks on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. You should see that that 13th block brings you right here to your chunk border just like this. And as long as it does, then you're going to count in five blocks. 1, 2, 
three, four, and five. Go ahead and come down below that block with an observer just like this. Place an observer out in this direction just like that. Place yourself a sticky piston there with a slime block on its face. Once you've done this, then you need to extend this all the way to your pistons over there. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna count by 12. So we're gonna go ahead and count 12 blocks, including this slime block right here. So that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, just like that. That's as many blocks as that one can move. And so therefore we need to build another one of these, but over here. So we're gonna go ahead and count five blocks back. One, two, three, four, and five. Come down below, place in an observer there, an observer there, place in a sticky piston with a slime block on its face, and then do this all over again. So you're gonna go ahead and count 12 blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, just like that. Count five blocks in, just like this. One, two, three, four, and five. Come down below, placing yourself in a, an observer. Place in himself on another observer, just like this, with a sticky piston and a slime block on its face. Pretty repetitive. It's the same thing over and over again. Do that all the way down to your pistons. Once you've done that all the way down the line to your pistons, then go ahead and come over here to where your pistons are, and then count three blocks in front, one, two, and three, just like that. Place yourself an observer on that line of blocks that you placed in. Go ahead and place an observer down this way and then grab yourself a regular piston and put it in there facing in this direction. Once you've got that in place, then you're gonna come to whichever slime machine that you have right here that's actually got four blocks in front of it. So as you can see, this one here does not have four blocks in front of it. And therefore we're gonna need to use this one right here. So we're gonna come up four blocks in front of this one. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four right to this block right here. Go ahead and place yourself a temporary block in front of that one just like this. Then place yourself in a downwards facing observer just like that and you can break out that block. Go ahead and place in yourself a forward facing observer with a sticky piston on its face and then you're gonna have to alternate from slime and go to honey. So that's gonna be an alternating thing. So again, you're gonna do this over and over again. So if you want to, go ahead and place uh, all of your observers in all at once, just like this, all the way across the length of your pistons, just like so. And you're gonna need to do that all the way across to your pistons, just like so. Then once you have that in place, go ahead and do all of your observers, just like this, break the extra one out, and then go ahead and take the sticky pistons on the front. And then on the front here, you're gonna go ahead and alternate slime and honey, slime and honey, slime and honey, all the way across. Once you have that done, it should look something like this. And then once you have that in place, you're gonna need one of these and every other slime machine. And I recommend before you place all of these in to double check all of your work, because that way at least you know that all of this is gonna be in the right distance. So go ahead and break the block that's in front of your slime machine, just like this. And you're gonna do that every block back. Go ahead and break these blocks just like so. Do this all the way, all the way back to your machine back there. So now all of your slime machines should now have a block broken out in front of it, just like this, all the way, all the way to the pistons way back there. Then once you have that in place, go ahead and come to this piston right here and go ahead and power it. Go ahead and make sure that that all goes forward just like so. And it should stop somewhere just like this if you've built it longer than the simulation distance can load. So if your machine is stopped like this, go ahead and double check it by uh, breaking this block right there and it should continue all the way to the end just like that. And if it does, then you know you've done everything correctly. If for some reason when you do that and it doesn't trigger, then you know you've built one of these off position. But as long as you've tested this and all of your machines now have a gap in the front of it just like so then you know that this is going to work all the way to the other side and then when you get that completed go ahead and throw the rest of all of your slime machines in and once you have all of your fine machines in it, the last one right here at the very front is gonna look just like this. It's gonna have a little bit of a different gap right here than in the front, and that's because we need a five block gap right here. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So you're gonna need a five block gap right here between that and fly machine and these pistons over here. And that's gonna leave you a two block gap right here between these guys, so that's what you're gonna need there. And that's gonna leave you with this piston pusher looking like that. So once you have that in place, you should be good. And in the next few clips of the tutorial, you're gonna see this only two block away and then it's only later on that I realized it was a mistake. So once all of your slime machines are in, we're gonna go ahead and come back to these pistons right here. Go ahead and place a temporary block on top of that piston and two more out just like this. Go ahead and break these two temporary blocks out and come around in this direction and place a piston in there just like this. What we need to do now is we need to actually place in ourselves a temporary block there and one there. We're gonna take ourselves an observer just like this with the red dot facing back and we can delete these two temporary blocks. Then we're gonna place an observer in this direction just like this with the arrow facing in towards that piston. So the red dot is facing right towards it like that. 
So once we have that in place, then we're going to go ahead and place another observer on there. And this is going to get wired up to a piston that's going to come right over here. We're going to come back to this redstone block right here. We're going to place a, two temporary blocks in just like this. Come around to this side and place yourself in a piston just like that, one block away from your redstone block. And now to wire these two up, we're going to come right over here to this observer. We're going to place a block right there. We're going to come up by a block and over by a block just like this. So it steps up like so. We're going to do that two more times. So we have four blocks in total just like this. So we have four blocks in diagonal. We're going to place the three more, one, two, and three, just like that. We're going to bring out a temporary block down here, just like that, to get one to come down. Then we're also going to place one more down in here, just like that. And then we're going to place one down here, like this. So that comes in there, just like so. Now what we can do is we can take redstone dust, we can place it on top of all of these blocks and bring that all the way back to your observer. And then once you have all that wired up, it should look something like this. And now that we have a piston that's gonna push this redstone block this way, we're gonna need one on this side that pushes it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right to this side right here to this piston. We're gonna place a temporary block in there like that. We're gonna come over to this side and place ourselves in a piston just like that facing this way. So this redstone block will go back and forth. Now we need to wire this one up and that's gonna come down here to this piston right here, this sticky piston with the piston on top on its face just like so go ahead and place yourself a redstone torch right there place yourself in a sticky piston just like that with an observer on its face take yourself some glazed terracotta or a melon block just like that and put it right there once you have this in place go ahead and come over to this side we're going to come to that glazed terracotta block and put a temporary block in right there and then one down here break that one out Go ahead and count three blocks just like this in total, just three here. Then place a block right there and one more out here. So that way it looks like this, three and then two right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and come up by a block just like this and you can break this one out here temporarily. Then up here, we're gonna go ahead and take ourselves an obsidian block. We're gonna place that in right there, right at the corner of that piston. That way when these are getting pushed, it cannot go out. And then from there, we're gonna go up another block just like this and up one more on the back of that piston just like so. Now you're gonna grab your redstone dust and place redstone dust on top of all of these blocks. Go ahead and come on down here, down to here, and then all the way to your glazed terracotta. Once you've got that wired up, next we need to go ahead and come down below this glazed terracotta block. So go ahead and place in a temporary block there and one down below it just like this. And you're gonna carry this line of blocks all the way straight, all the way back to your other pistons, which are way back there. If you've built your farm smaller, it's gonna be this set of pistons all the way in the back that look just like this. And since I'm building the full version, you can kind of see that dark line right there. That's where we're gonna be running it back to. Then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take redstone dust on top of these. And then anywhere that this observer is gonna be, where this red dot is, see that red dot on the observer? We're gonna come right here. We're gonna take a repeater and place it in there just like that so that red dot doesn't power our redstone dust. So we're gonna go a couple more blocks just like this. And then where that red dot is again, we're gonna place ourselves in another repeater. And you're gonna do that for every single time you see an observer with a red dot, place yourself in a repeater and then red redstone dust everywhere else. If you're building the one chunk version of this farm, then you will not need to do that because there are no observers under here for any of the slime machines. But if you've built this farm two chunks or bigger, then your repeater line is gonna go all the way down just like this. Once you get all the way to your pistons, you can stop right about here. And then over here on this side of your pistons, you're gonna come right over here, place in a temporary block just like this, and then come down one block just like that. And then go ahead and come to this side, place a temporary block in here, and one down just like this, and place one more out here just like so, and then complete that up right here. Bring redstone dust here and here, and then place yourself in a four tick repeater right there. Then you need to come up here and place redstone dust on top of here and link it up with all these pistons. Once you've got this all wired up, go ahead and break all of your temporary blocks leading all the way back to the beginning. Once you've removed all those blocks, your farm's gonna look like this. And so once it's done with that, then go ahead and come back here to this redstone block here. We're gonna go ahead and place in it two blocks just like this. We're gonna come down here and place in a sticky piston just like that, and another sticky piston facing downwards right here just like so. Go ahead and break out your two temporary blocks. And then on this side, grab yourself another piston and place it in right there. Grab yourself a block, place it right there with some redstone dust on top. And then over here, grab yourself an observer and place it in there just like so. Grab yourself some redstone dust and go ahead and place it in there just like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a temporary block in there. We're gonna come one out to the side. Once you have that block, you're gonna go ahead and place another block right here and one more out to the side just like this. And as you can see right here, your slime machines right here are actually right in this line of blocks. And so we need to go one out to the side just like so. And we're gonna bring that over just like this and we can break that one out. Next, we need to come down this side. We need to go ahead and extend that all the way to this side as well. We're gonna extend it just one past our slime 
blocks down there, so we're going to come all the way out to this area, and it should be right in line with this observer, this piston down here, just like so. Once you're right there, go ahead and turn in this direction. Then you're going to take these lines of blocks and these lines of blocks, and you're going to go ahead and carry them all the way down to your pistons right over there. So if you're building the one chunk version, it's going to look a lot like this, where these blocks get carried all the way to the back, and then when you're above your pistons, you're going to turn 90 degrees and make it just like this. So when you reach the other side over here by your pistons, you're going to come right above your pistons just like so, place on a temporary block and come out to the side just like so, so it's directly above your pistons, and then drag that all the way across to the other side. So completes up your corner. Once you have that completed, it should look a lot like this. And then once you have that done, go ahead and come to one of the corners and then place yourself in a temporary block and come down just like this. And this could be dripstone or any block of choice. And we're gonna place a pointed dripstone on the bottom of that one. So once we have that in place, you're gonna go ahead and fill this entire area in just like so. And it's gonna look a lot like this where you have all of this dripstone or any block of choice with all these pointed dripstones on the bottom. And then once you have that completed, it should look a lot like this. And then once you have that done, we are gonna notice that there's no lava up here yet, but we're not going to put that in just yet. We're actually going to come down here and now we need to do something. We need to come over here where all these observers are that are face up with the face facing up just like these. And we need to go right above them and look straight up and break that dripstone right there. We can't have a dripstone right there because that might update the cauldron when it fills up with lava and it could false update this observer, which is we don't want to do. So anywhere there's a face up observer, go ahead and look up and then go ahead and break the dripstone. So this whole line of dripstone is going to go away because all those observers are looking up. So anywhere you have upwards facing observers go ahead and make sure that you have those removed and then also uh, on an observers like this that are observing the cauldron from the side we need to do the same thing we're going to come to this side where they're observing we're going to look straight up and we're going to go ahead and break the uh, blocks out just like that it looks like i put in a few more blocks than i needed <laughs> yeah you don't need blocks underneath this that includes this observer right here, so go ahead and break that dripstone. And it also includes this one way down here at the end, the one that's facing in towards your cauldrons that will be right here. So go ahead and break the block that's right above here. So right there, that's where we're going to want to break that. And now that you have that done, all these should be done. So of course, we're going to do all the upwards facing ones, all these corner ones, and then the ones that are over there. I recommend taking a moment to go ahead and double check all of your work. Make sure that every observer does not have a dripstone above it, just to make sure that you don't have any false updates from that happening. So in total, it's going to be this one and it's going to be that one and the one way down at the end. We're going to make sure that we don't have any dripstones up there just to be sure so we don't have any false updates. And then of course, any of these face up ones just like this, make sure all of those don't have any dripstone above them just like that. And then once you have that done, go ahead and take your lava and go ahead and fill this whole thing in. When you've placed all your lava, it should look like this and then make sure that you don't have any flowing patches like over here where we have flowing lava. If you have flowing lava, try to get in the middle of that lava and place in a lava source and we'll get rid of the flowing lava just like that. So once you find it, it should stay still just like so. And then if you come up here or go to the side, you should see more flowing lava like this if you happen to have more flowing lava. So once you have that all done, it should all be still looking. Once you know all of your lava sources are in and no lava is flowing, then you know that you've covered all your lava sources. And then you could, if you wanted to, block the areas from here and you don't have to put lava up there. But that's kind of risk taking and I don't really want to risk not having lava where I need it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill all these in with lava. And then it, once we have all that done, and now we can come down here finally with our cauldrons. And we're going to go ahead and start over here at this piston. We're going to go ahead and place in a uh, cauldron right there and on top of all these other pistons all the way over to here and then we're going to go ahead and skip uh, right here we're going to leave that alone and in fact this redstone block right here we need to go ahead and remove this redstone block so go ahead and remove it just like this and then place that up there so that way the farm is off that's actually the on switch right there so we needed that to be off so that way we don't activate the uh, farm on accident so what we're going to do now is we're going to come uh, forward just like this and then we're going to place another cauldron out to the side just like so and actually that's going to happen right over here we're going to come one cauldron in front of that observer and then we're going to skip a block right where that piston is and then we're going to come right on top of this redstone so that redstone passes right underneath that cauldron once we have that in place then we can go ahead and take uh, these cauldrons and we can go in a straight line all the way across all the way down to the end and then we can also pretty much fill in this entire area all the way uh, over to here. And if you have oh, some of these uh, slime machines here, then what you're going to do is you're actually going to leave a block right here. So we're going to come out just like this. And I'll do the first one for you guys. So right where the slime block is, 
just like so. You're gonna go ahead and skip a block and come out to the side like that, so that way there's no cauldron right in front of that slime block. So same thing's gonna happen for these guys. You're not gonna have a cauldron right here. You're gonna leave a one block gap, so you're actually gonna go just like this, and then you're gonna have a gap right here all the way across. So make sure that there's a gap in front of all of your slime blocks in front and also in the back. And then once you have that completed, it should look a lot like this, right? Where you have your slime blocks right here and no cauldron in front of them on both sides. So you have no cauldron in the front over here and no cauldron in the back over here on this line. So you're gonna wanna have that done all the way down to the length of your farm, regardless of how long you've made it. And I actually made a mistake earlier. We put a cauldron right here by this piston. We're actually gonna take that cauldron out and we're gonna place that in right here. We actually need that in front of that piston because we're about to turn our farm on and test it. So go ahead and grab your redstone block. I'm testing it for the first time with you guys too. So let's go ahead and grab this guy and we're gonna bring this guy down here. When we do that, it's gonna activate all this redstone and it's gonna push this cauldron across, which is gonna send it all the way down the line. And it's gonna start a process where all of these cauldrons start to come in here and get pushed down until all these cauldrons get pushed down to the end and then they all get pushed down this way to start all over. So let's go ahead and do that and see that in real time. If we place that redstone block there, we should see that that cauldron gets pushed down and here in just a minute, we're gonna see a piston come up right here and push these across, there we are. And then here in just a few seconds, you're gonna see that happen again. Yep, and that should happen all the way down to the end. If you wanted to go big with this farm and you built it further than five chunks long, then you will need a second account or a friend to come on the realm with you or world and stand right here in the middle of your farm so that way it's loaded out to each side and that way the whole farm is loaded while you're testing. And during my testing, I experienced an issue where my cauldrons were getting pushed further than my piston was getting pushed. However, I still had cauldrons going over here and I think that's because this is a chunk border. It was acting funny. And if this is happening to you, it's just a glitch so go ahead and break this and we can fix this right now what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves some obsidian we're going to go ahead and place that right there so none of the cauldrons can get past that but now our redstone dust is cut off so what we're going to do is we're going to come right out here we're going to come down here just like that and then go ahead and take this repeater put it up there like so put it on four ticks and then replace that repeater with some redstone dust and then hook this up with redstone dust there there and it's okay if it hits that piston because when these are extended that piston is not going to be firing even though now it's going to be firing because it's getting powered but it's not going to cause any issues so you should be just fine so as you can see my farm is actually finishing it's testing right now there goes the last cauldron in here in just, just a second you're going to see this uh piston go down and then all of these are going to get pushed forward like this it's all going to come down here and as you can see they're coming down right now here they all are and then it's going to start all over and continue to cycle so as your farm's cycling you can go ahead and double check it if you want to and make sure that everything's functioning properly make sure everything's getting pushed down the line just like this and then obviously we did see that all these cauldrons got pushed and it brought back to the beginning. And once you know your farm is fully functional and everything's cycling just like this, then go ahead and come over to the center of your farm. Go ahead and wherever that's it is if you built it smaller than this and just find the center somewhere. And now we're gonna count in four chunks from the edge. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth one is gonna be the center of my farm because I have four chunks over there and four chunks over there. And the fifth chunk is right where I have my second account standing. So now that we know this, we're gonna go ahead and use this area from here and we're gonna come all the way over to here just like that uh, minus that one block so we can't go there because that's where the slime block is and we can go all the way up to there just like that so this is the area that we have to work with you can choose whichever block you want to be your center because this is where we're gonna be building so once you found your center chunk and you've laid out your building area now out of all these blocks you need to choose four in which you want to use and the center of your farm is gonna be one block to the right and two blocks to the left and this will be the center of your farm where you stand as a player so knowing that I I want to have my farm right in the center just like my player is down there so i'm going to go ahead and break these two blocks right here and we're going to go ahead and break that block right there so now my farm is directly in the center once you have your area laid out go ahead and come down beneath here and then right here in your center block you're going to go ahead and place a block right there so from above it looks complete if you decided to move your machine over over to this area then you're going to have these observers and that's perfectly fine you can use that as a block you're just going to have to look at it so it won't look so nice for a, as a normal block that you would have so once you have that in place, then go ahead and break this block and go ahead and place yourself in a slab right there. I'm gonna have to move my second account out of the way because I'm gonna be building right here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come right down below here. We're gonna come down here just like this, place a block in right there. Go ahead and place yourself in a hopper in this direction just like so. 
Go ahead and place yourself another temporary block right in there, and then have a barrel facing up just like this for your storage system. You can also expand your storage system, and if you'd like to do that, I have a ton of chocolate box loaders that would work perfect on this farm, and I'll leave a link to those up in the top right-hand corner. And then once you have this in place, go ahead and come to the side of your barrel, place yourself in a block just like that, and then go ahead and fill in your floor just all the way around the barrel like so. And then once you have that done, go ahead and come to one side, place in a block right here. Go ahead and come up by one block and then come up by another two blocks just like so, making this L shape just like that. You're gonna do the same thing on this side of the floor. We're gonna come out by two blocks and then up by another two blocks just like this. Once you have that in place, go ahead and throw yourself a redstone lamp over here like this. This will be your indicator for the farm being on. And then also you're gonna throw yourself in a dropper over here. Once you have this complete, go ahead and come to your dropper right here and then throw a hopper going into the top of that one just like so. Then grab yourself a chest and place it on on top of that hopper and one out to the side so you make a double chest just like this then go ahead and crouch place yourself a block on the side of that hopper and bring it all the way across like so then over here where there's a hole go ahead and put a block above that once you have this complete then go ahead and throw yourself a lever right there in the center on that block and then right above here we're going to go ahead and put some redstone dust here and here we're going to take a redstone lamp and put it right there that's going to be that the farm is on and anytime we turn that down the farm is going to be off and then once you have that in place go ahead and come across over here and then crouch place yourself a couple blocks all the way across the top leading from there over so that way the front of your building looks just like this and then you can put a, an extra block layer right here in the front for an entrance to make it look nice once you have this all done then you guys could put another block up here if you want i kind of like the way that looks it look, looks a little bit more complete with the chest being over here but nonetheless we need to come back behind it, this dropper right here we're going to break that block right there and we're going to take ourselves a redstone comparator and put it right there what that's going to do is it's going to make it to where anytime there's a full cauldron it's going to spit out a bucket to the player so that way the player only gets buckets if there's a full cauldron in front of it once you have that all done and dusted go ahead and come up on top of your build right here to the end of your redstone go ahead and place a block right there with a torch on top go ahead and place another block on top of that torch just like so come around back and place yourself in a torch right underneath this line of blocks right there then on top of that you're going to go ahead and take some redstone dust and you're going to run it all the way down the end of this uh line of blocks here all the way to the end and then wherever your redstone stops just like this this is where mine stops go ahead and take yourself a repeater break out the redstone that's not lit and then put it right there and then go ahead and continue your, your redstone all the way to the end once you've ran your repeaters and your redstone all the way down to the end, you should see that it's lit all the way down here. And then go ahead and place yourself in a redstone torch and it should turn off just like that. Grab yourself a couple more blocks, place these in right here, and then grab some redstone dust and bring that all the way back to your torch. Once you have that all completed, then go ahead and come back to the center of your farm, back to this area. And then go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and turn this lever up just like that. And that's gonna be in the on position. So now the farm is in the on position, but that means that the sticky pistons are now grabbing that, slide, that uh, redstone block. So if we go ahead and turn this off, you should see that your whole farm here stops here in just a second. There it is, it just stopped. And you should see that this observer right here is up top just like that. And that's because of this piston has been grabbed by that slime block just like so. So now this is our on switch. This is the part that we just put, put in. And now the redstone block is up there. So now the farm is gonna be off. So now if we come back over here to the beginning, let's go ahead and head on over here. And then if we flick this lever in the on position now where the light is lit up, we should see here in just a second that our cauldrons all get pushed forward just like that. Once you know your on switch is working, then go ahead and turn the farm back off just like this and wait till all your cauldrons stop, which they should just about now. And then once they have that done, then go ahead and grab yourself some buckets. Come over here to this dropper and go ahead and load everything up with buckets. And you're going to want to load up this uh, chest right here too. So now once you've loaded up this chest with buckets, your farm is completely done and ready to use. You should be able to use it now. And if you want to create a bigger storage system, then I recommend going ahead and doing that. I believe that's a temporary block right there. We don't need that one. But if you are ready to use this thing now, then go ahead and get yourself a stack of buckets in your inventory. You're going to want to place those in the furthest left slot in your hot bar here. And it doesn't really matter if you have a full inventory or not. It doesn't matter if you have any other items in here. You're going to be using buckets and only using buckets if you're collecting lots and so therefore this system won't overload you with extra buckets. So let's go ahead and turn ourselves into survival mode, just like that. And now if we turn our farm on just like this, and then we hold L2 or your place button, and you just hold these on all the uh, <laughs> cauldrons just like this, you're gonna be holding L2. And every time one goes by, if it's got a full uh, cauldron, you're gonna be picking it up. So as you can see here, as another cauldron goes by, we're gonna pick up more lava and the dropper is gonna give us a bucket. So one thing that I've just noticed is that sometimes you can pick up two lava buckets worth of lava and it's because you're actually getting the cauldron behind this cauldron, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get that on film for you guys. 
There it is. I just did it right now. But nonetheless, it's happened to me. And as you can see, my inventory only has 10 buckets in there. And that's because I had 16 to start with and I've been getting a couple double. And so a good practice is when you use this farm, aim down here, aim down at the corner. So you're looking at the block below. And I think you could even aim in the center. Let's see if we can do that. And that'll make it to where you only get one bucket of lava every time all of these things go by. So let's see if another cauldron goes by. And if we get ourselves a bucket of lava, there we go. So you can look right there and you'll only collect one bucket of lava. So you'll never run out of buckets. And then, of course, if we take a look down in our short system, you can see that it's all lava buckets that have been produced. And I have a bunch in my inventory as well, which is perfectly fine. But nonetheless, you do not have any empty buckets going in here because the player collects them as they come out of the dropper. If you're running this farm, you do not want to leave this area. You want to stay right here in this chunk. And if you move out this way to another chunk, you will break your farm if you've built it this big. However, if you've built it small, it's only a single chunk. You still need to keep it loaded because if you walk away, you are going to break your farm so make sure before you leave your farm this lever is in the down position and that light is off so now i've logged my second account on and as you can see he's afk at the farm and he's getting buckets put into his inventory so he can collect more lava and if we look out back we can notice that all the cauldrons after this station are all empty because he's been collecting all the lava so once that's happening and you know that's all being good then your farm is totally working and it should be ready to go and remember if your farm is this big it probably doesn't need to be this low you can also play with the timings around here if you want to if you feel confident enough to do that if you've built yourself a big farm like this then you can go ahead and turn all these repeaters to one tick so let's go ahead and try that here if we turn all these repeaters to one tick just like that it's going to go ahead and ramp up the speed of the uh, whole thing here however if you do that you're going to want to turn your farm off i didn't turn it off and i actually just fixed it just now <laughs> i just had to restart it but nonetheless that shouldn't be a big deal just go ahead and turn your farm off before you play with these repeater timings then once you have both sides even go ahead and turn your farm back on and test it out and really for that matter this whole timer these comparators and everything right here this is for the smaller farms which most of you i believe are going to be building a smaller farm like this which is perfectly fine however if you guys are redstone geniuses and you guys want to build a mega farm like this then you can really just get rid of this whole entire timer here you can literally just take the redstone from here hook it up down here and just run it into both of these blocks with no repeaters and you'll just need these one tick repeaters right there on the end that'll be just uh to transfer the signal down to here and over there but unless you could literally take the redstone from here, run it right down into this line right here, into these blocks, and it'll still work. So what the heck, let's go ahead and show you guys how to do it on film. We're gonna go ahead and break this block right there, and all of this could go, like I said, all the comparators and everything. And what we're gonna do instead, if you have a big farm like this, we're gonna ramp up the speed by placing in a glass block right there and some redstone dust right there. That's gonna go ahead and get powered from this block above it. That way we can remove all of these repeaters right here. We can put in redstone dust like this. And then over here, we can go ahead and remove these repeaters just like that and put redstone dust over here. So now this circuit is directly connected to that one and we're bypassing this entire timer. Now what we can do is we can actually come right over here. We can go ahead and repower our system. So if we go just like that, go just like that, that should go ahead and trigger the whole system. And now it's going to go super fast, just like this. So now we have a super fast lava farm and it's going to still work just the same. Let's go ahead and see. Here it is. We should have all these cauldrons coming back now. There it is. Oh, looks like we have some that are missing. <laughs> well, I did figure out the problem. You can't run a farm of this size that fast. These push and pushers down here do slow it down just a little bit. You can run a small farm like this that fast because there are no piston and pushers down below. However, what we're going to need to do is we need to come right over here. We need to put three ticks right here because those piston pushers have three ticks of delay. They have one observer, two observers, and a piston. So that's three ticks in total. And so we're going to add three ticks right there. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to put three ticks there then also two down below we're going to need to do the same thing to our redstone line right here all these repeaters we're going to put these on three ticks just like that so go ahead and add those ticks to these repeaters underneath here and you're going to want to do that all the way down the line then once you have that completed go ahead and uh, replace your redstone block here and turn your farm back on and then you should see that everything is going to function just properly so here's all of these cauldrons coming in just like so here they come. Here's the last one coming in right now. And now if we watch down there, we're gonna see our cauldrons being pushed down here in just a second. So the signal has reached there. Now here comes all the cauldrons and it looks like now we're gonna have all the cauldrons. There they are, and the cycle is going to continue to happen. And if we fly all the way down here, we can see why we need that uh, delay. So if we come all the way down here, 
you can see that this piston has to push all these cauldrons in and it has just enough time to do that with that added delay that we now have so there's all the there it is right now so it just it barely has enough time to function so you do need that delay and it'll work just as fast as it possibly can so as you guys can see if you guys have the proper timings on all your repeaters this farm will work just fine and it'll work pretty fast just like this and yeah, of course you could make this farm work even faster because we don't have any of those piston pressures below but I don't recommend doing that because your cauldrons are not going to fill up in time so I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial this one was a lot of fun I expanded this for the first time on film with you guys during this video I knew that it was going to take these piston pushers but this was actually a lot of fun and kind of an experimental thing which is why I ran into some issues with a, a farm of this size but nonetheless we worked out all the kinks we got it working and here comes all of our cauldrons this is satisfying to watch right here if nothing else, build this farm just to watch the cauldrons get pushed like that. <laughs> but anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's tutorial, please smack the like button for me and subscribe if you guys are new. I'm Broken Bones, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next tutorial. Take it easy, everybody.